another one they're getting ready for us for next week. We got a pretty decent day here today. It's actually about 45, 50 degrees way down on the ocean again. They want to try to get this thing in next week. Next week it looks brutally cold. It's not even really supposed to get above freezing. So I don't know what's going to happen, but if they, you know, it's always nice to get them in first before they deck them over because the access, the access on these is really bad afterwards. There's no windows. There's really nothing to go through after. So you kind of almost have to cut a hole in the floor to get through. And then we got to run lights, and then we got to have heat down there. I, they got a lot of work left to do to get this ready. I think it's going to be all of today, just finishing up doing the backfilling. Then they still got to put they still got to put styrofoam down on that whole thing in there. So we'll see we'll see if they get it ready or not. I know Monday's a high of 20, so that's that's probably out of the question. I think. Tuesday would be our only day. It might get just above 32 on Tuesday. So if there is any chance of getting this done, it would be that day. But you know, there's a lot of work left here to do. So we'll see what happens. Good morning, guys. So we're down here early in the morning. They did get this ready. It's uh, cold, soon 20s. Right down here on the coast this morning. Well, we're gonna at least get this basement floor done. We, we got two trucks today getting the first one ready so we'll get this poured and see how it goes all right guys just getting going seems to be going okay so far So I was really shocked to see that they got this ready. I didn't believe they'd do it. It was Friday, you know, the first part of the video when I was when it wasn't backfilled or anything. That was Friday at about one o'clock in the afternoon, and there was only about three hours of daylight left. So they must have worked all day Saturday too to get get the backfilling done. And then Saturday over the weekend, it snowed like five or six inches down here. So. I'm assuming they came back Monday in that brutally cold weather and, and shoveled all the snow out, got the styrofoam down, and, uh, you know, hopefully they checked to see if, make sure there wasn't any frost in there. That's really not my part. That's the general contractor we're working for is, you know, they, they kind of have to make that choice and that decision, and they wanted us here today pour and get this basement floor done, so that's why we're here today. Those pads you see with the bolts coming out of it in the middle, normally we'd box out around those so they can set there. They probably got less some type of a steel column going there. Then they'd they'd bolt that down and grout it. But they changed their minds on that, so I you know they just told us to pour right over them, and they came up with a different plan. So I don't I don't know exactly what they're doing now with those, but it doesn't really matter to us. They they just told us to pour right over it and not really worry about it. So today, I mean, it would have been nice to get that upper part too there, the one, you know, furthest away there in the video, that little floor up in there too today. But because the concrete companies are so busy, we could only get two trucks today. So we had to make a decision on which one to do. And the, actually the builder just said, do the basement first. And at least we can start decking that over. And the other part's just a crawl space. So... I mean, it doesn't really need a finish on the floor in there, but it just, it does need a concrete floor in there. And I don't know when we're going to get that, if we'll be able to, so this is a Tuesday today. And the rest of this week, the weather was bad, so we couldn't pour it uh, on that Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday after we did this. And then, you know, it was Christmas too on that Saturday. So as far as that week between Christmas and New Year's, That'll be the week that, you know, we can get down here and do this. And I don't know if the weather's going to be good enough for it or not. Um, we'll just have to wait and see on what happens there. But it would have been nice to get it all done today. It just so happened the weather turned out to be about 40 today down here with a little bit of sun out. So it it, it is going to dry okay. We could feel it as we was pouring it. It was starting to set up on us already. Luckily, we got 
Javi right there, he's the one raking, and Jim is in the background with the other orange sweatshirt on on the phone. So we got, you know, those two guys to help us. Jim works for himself. He does foundations. Javi works for himself. Um, he's done concrete for about 16 years, but he also just, he does building and stuff like that too. So when we give them a call to come help sometimes, they, uh, they're they more than happy to jump right in, and it's vice versa. If they ever needed help with something, they knew they they know that they could call us too. We're just going to hand screed this today. We got... Instead of using the power screed down here, we just grabbed the hand screed. We knew that the concrete was going to be really, really hot. It was over an hour's drive to get here. And the water temperature was 160 degrees. Plus we added some bag flake accelerator to it. So we knew that it was going to be setting up quick on us. And sometimes, sometimes it's just easier to screed by hand when the concrete's setting up. Versus using trying to get it nice and level with a with a vibrating screed, you just you have more like more down pressure on the screed when you grab it with your hands than you do when you got the handles of the vibra screed. So we just figured it would be quicker just to get this get it done this way. We get that first truck with a conveyor all dumped out. The conveyor made it pretty handy because those walls are a little higher than normal. Typically they're around about eight feet. 7 foot 10 somewhere around there these ones are about a foot and a half taller than that so sometimes dumping out of the chute like that you can see how high the chute is off the ground sometimes that's just a little bit more of a pain in the butt we figured if we could use the conveyor for the first truck it would just make it go a little bit quicker for that one plus it was a further a little further reach too so we didn't have to pull out our coal chutes for that We'll make pretty quick work of dumping this one out because he's, you know, right over that near wall. We did add our high range water reducer in this too so we could get the slump up to, you know, right around a 7. That's what we tell them anyway. So it's pretty flowable coming out of the chutes. Then once we turn the chute around and hang it like this, we can, we can dump out quite a bit of concrete pretty fast just by redirecting it like this. It doesn't really splatter this way either. As long as, as long as the driver keeps it going pretty consistently and somewhat fast, it doesn't really splatter. It just comes right out and it, and it flows around pretty nice this way. We like it going just a little bit faster than that right there. But again, I, I couldn't believe these guys got this ready. It's a good thing they did. I mean, we're right at the end of December. It's just... Pouring these outside like this in this cold weather is is really taking a risk. I mean, we do have blankets on it. You can kind of see them up there in the back. You got the concrete truck right there. Then you got to the right of the concrete truck. There's some, well, you can't see them now, but there were some blankets sitting up there on the back. We got about 16 of them to cover this with afterwards. And if we, I mean, if we don't cover this, it's just going to freeze tonight. kind of screeding right up against a floor drain there was three floor drains in this floor too for whatever reason I have no idea they really I really don't get that many details other than the floor is you know it's four inches thick it's just a four inch average over the styrofoam and I can I can use the mix I want I can put the accelerator in I want we put fiber mesh in it for reinforcement I kind of make the decision on that stuff and then We'll power trial this. We'll get it power trialed really nice and smooth today. And then it's sometimes these plans will have a saw cut plan on them. And sometimes they just leave it to our discretion. So today it was just, you know, hey, cut as many cuts in it as you think it needs. And and we'll go with that. So we usually cut it up pretty good when, when they leave it up to us. That's Javi right there running the bowl float. Brian, he's the concrete driver up there. He's it. We like Brian. Um, we had uh, the the first driver. He's actually from the same town we, we're from. He's from Monmouth. He went to school with us too, and we like getting him too. He's a pretty, he's a good driver. The good thing about these drivers is they're all really really experienced. So uh, 
we don't really need to tell them much they just show up they, they pretty much know what we want for a slump they put the accelerator in for us they pretty much get everything ready without having to kind of go up and and do everything for them so that when the concrete's really hot like this that makes a big big difference Josh is the first driver's name so Josh Hammond Josh does a really good job with that conveyor and <clears throat> you can see him up there washing it now his dad drove a truck too so his kind of driving trucks has been in his family for a while he looks grabbing right onto that eight foot straight edge now he's coming down that one last little piece We'll screed both ways sometimes, and what I mean by that is we'll do it with with one guy on the screed like this. Sometimes we'll just have two guys grab it. And it really, to us, it really doesn't matter. As long as it gets done, we don't really care. Let's just get it done. Today there was quite a bit to do for five guys, you know, to keep everybody busy, so Luke just grabbed right onto it. Darren jumps right in there with the bull flow, get that done. And at the same time, now me and Luke are grabbing the 14-foot screed coming down with that. That's what makes it really nice working with these guys. It's just something needs to get done. It just gets done. We just do it. Nobody's telling somebody what to do. You can see those footprints. When, when you start leaving footprints in there like that, you know the Crete's setting up good on you. Um, when you start out pouring a 6 or a 7 and your footprints don't fill back in afterwards, that means the Crete's setting up really, really good. Well, Darren's going to finish that little piece off there right by himself and we're going to jump into that next section it's kind of like a utility room see all the pipes they had to core drill all those holes through the wall and then there's a center drain in there and I don't know what they're going to put in there just all the utilities for the house for whatever they got a lot of those are for electrical different electrical things the water lines down there you can't see the water line right now it's down in this front corner but and then they even have a like a pump there's a pump down here in this right corner that you can't see that I'm kind of going around right there we slightly we pitched everything to that center drain about three quarters of an inch so the whole room slopes to that drain and then the little room in the back the one you can't see very good right now but the one we're gonna go out from is we call that a bulkhead so they'll run a set of stairs down there from the to get, access this from the outside of the building a lot of houses foundations in Maine when they do these they have an, what we call a bulkhead so they can have access to it from the outside of the house and obviously you got the stairs on the inside of the house too so let me know what you know you, you guys shocked too that they got this ready for us and in, in the amount of time when you first saw the video until we showed up that first thing Tuesday morning. I mean, let me know what you think down in the comments. If uh, do you have to deal with the same type of things, waiting for people to get stuff ready for you before you pour, and then pouring in the cold temperatures like this too. What's what's your pet peeve also for stuff like this? Mine is I just don't like pouring if there's ice and snow on the subgrade. I mean, that's just a big no-no for me. Just get that stuff off if you want us to pour it. Get it off, get it ready. We'll come pour it. Yeah, got it on. Everything went good. Just gonna wash up and get out of here. We'll leave Darren and Luke to finish, and then should be should dry up pretty good today. This is the bulkhead. It should be good. <laughs> 